Yeah. You see, there is no problem in, uh, this goes back to what we started uh, more or less separating in a very clear point with the children's program on Wednesday. Periodic table is correct in a matter state. We have the same kind of mat uh, what do you call it, element in a plasma state. It's the behavior. So, we don't say if the periodic table is right or wrong. No, it's there, it's, the, it's helped us to develop technologies and lifestyle around it, to understand it. But, now, as I said, periodic table goes with physics. Science of physics, not science of plasma. So, in a, in a plasmatic condition, which is the work of the universe, and it's not in a matter state, what we call in a Ganser state, as a plasma of an entity, then you have a different uh, approach, different understanding in respect to the whole thing. So, there is nothing wrong with the periodic table, but in a plasma, we don't see an electron. So, the first thing when you go into that state, throws the whole periodic table uh, into turmoil, because it works with a number of electrons and protons and neutrons, and we don't have that. So, now we have to establish a new understanding in how we see a plasma, which is all about the same shape and size, in respect to what they are, what they perform, what they indicate, what they, what condition they create for the environment they are in. So, in, uh, in, uh, in a plasma technology, when you be open into the structure of the plasma, look at like the gans of copper oxide, look at the gans of the CO2, you don't see number of protons, you don't see number of neutrons, you don't see electrons. So, where does the knowledge go? But we see the behavior of CO2. We see behavior of uh, copper oxide. So, the new technology, the new science in uh, plasma technology, which that's why I said is totally different than physics, because physics to me is a matter state, and there is nothing wrong with it, because that's a state we have to accept. And the matter in that state behaves that way. It, it, it shows itself to be what it is. So, if you are used to one electron and one proton, if I can go bigger and bigger that you can see it, then what happens to this plasma, which is just a hydrogen, behaves like hydrogen, and shows itself as hydrogen, but inside it, we cannot see any um, separation. So, there is a need for a new understanding of plasma. So, how do we understand, how can we recognize, how can we distinguish one element plasma from another plasma? In a very simple way, we have to devise new systems. New systems, where they can measure the magnetical, what the plasma rejects, and gravitational, what the plasma brings in, as magnetic field. And the difference between the two, is the strength of that plasma, in its environment. Because the same plasma, on Earth condition, can be this size. But when we go to another position, the same plasma can be this size. So, then we see the plasma is conditioned to what environment allows it to grow into and intake. Maybe in another universe, maybe in another part of the galaxy, when there is much stronger gravitational magnetic field, the size of the plasma of the hydrogen will be this big. Because this is what the environment in that area allows it to take size of. This is what we always say. In a larger scale, the size of this solar cell, which is one plasma, is dictated by the gravitational magnetic field of the total galaxy, or of the fields of its own, what we call area, dictated to be and allows it to be. If you go back to uh, human body, the gravitational magnetic field and the size of the cavity of the 
The chest allows and dictates the size of the heart and the size of the lung. But that's a physical restriction. The same thing happens in the universe. But instead of bones, gravitational magnetic field is decided. If you've been online for past few days and even today, you see it very clearly. Gravitational magnetic field of the system allows for us, if it shrinks, to hear the radio, and then when it expands, due to its strength, we cannot hear the radio. That's a physical observation. So, how do we recognize elements in the universe, according to their plasmatic gravitational magnetic field? There are two ways to do, from a human point of view. One is observation by color. That's what you've seen on the book number three. We put a color range on it. And secondly, is observation by the detection in the difference strength at the point of the interaction of the environment, which is here. On the edge of the plasma, once we measure the gravitational magnetic field, we understand this point, at this point, if it's a CO2, if it's a carbon, if it's copper, if it's oxygen. Because it has a fingerprint. It has a strength level. On the other hand, the same size in the same environment, if interacts with the same area, that's why, for example, if this is the environment and this is the size of CO2, at this point, we see the copper oxide as CuO as blue, and at the same point with the CO2, we see it as white. It's the same plasma. This goes back to understanding of the structure of the elements in the universe. Where, whatever gravitational magnetic field sits, and it spirals up, at this point, is CO2. At this point, is copper oxide. As you go in, the strength increases. As you come out, the strength reduces. So, by the color, we should be able to see what we have in what composition. This is the difference in understanding the operation of the plasma. I was telling the knowledge seekers in the past week, that you do not, or in a way, you assess what is the gravitational magnetic field of destination you want to go to, and you build it in the reactor. Once we pass the gravitational magnetic field of the solar system, the life and the colors are totally different than what we are used to in this shell. I was explaining this one to a child some time ago. If you are in an egg and you're a chick, you only see the white color of the shell. But when you break the egg, when you break the shell, you see the all colors of the leaves and everything else. It doesn't mean that the, the colors did not exist, but it's the environment which you were in dictate you to see what, what was available in the shell with you. And we see these and we think that's the color of the universe and we see different shades and colors and they say this is, this planet has this material in it, that planet has that material in it. They see these things on a matter level of what it is in the atomic structure. But by colors, in fact it's easier to do it with the plasma. So, in time, as we we separate the plasma technology from what we call physics, as a new science, as a fundamental basis of the creation, then we understand there is nothing wrong and there is nothing uh, missing from any of the tables from the work of the scientists of the past. The only thing is, we always looked up, we looked at one atom, and then we call it one plus one molecule, and then molecules, and multiples of molecules, and we, we build the structure.
Now, we're going in the opposite direction. We're going low. We're going to below the what we had before. And this is what it looks a bit strange. But, in fact, you cannot build a building without a foundation. And the world of physics has been built on a very rocky, rocky foundation, because nobody knew what's underneath of it. So we ignored it, because we didn't understand it. And now, at this present level, the man can only understand, now, the work of the real plasma, as we open the books. But, this is not the foundation. There is a level below this, which is beyond the understanding of the man. In time, will open up. But, for the time being, plasma is what the world of the man, or the physics is built on, upon. So, we go into what we call the, in a very simple way, as we said in the, in the talks with the children, we go from plasma, to physics, and more plasmas together, we go to chemistry, and then we go to biology. But, below plasma, there is a level, which is the base of the creation of the whole universe, and is beyond the understanding of the man. Because man already has enough problem with physics, and even what we talk about the plasma, is unacceptable to them, it's very much like, when a man said the earth is round, they put him on a, on a, what do you call it, on a, on a noose. The structure of plasma, does not come to be the original. The, 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 the fundamental, the origin of the creation. There is a sub-plasma level, which is the fundamental and the point of the creation. But, if we go into that process, it's a book number eight, which is writ written about the magnetic fields, which in that book, I have explained the origin of the creation. So, what you talk in Mandalay, table, you talk about this part. You talk about physics. You're sitting in the margin, in the place, in the area, which is this part. What we talk about is before physics, which is a plasma. So, there is nothing wrong in all the things we've seen, but, in the world of physics, you talk about electrons and protons, in the world of plasma, we speak about magnetic gravitational field strength. If you add one plasma into the totality of a plasma of another one, you don't increase the strength or change the strength on the boundary. You feed the mass of the new plasma in a grounds which is added into the center mass. So, what does this center mass does? It has more strength, and so, where before you have the electron, or let's say, another element, plasma added to, you could see at this point, blue. Now you add the, another matter, which has increased the center, at the same point, you see green. But you see the same plasma. So, if you go back into what we said, and what we've done from the beginning, which is the spiral, of, actually, anticlockwise is the most appropriate, of the element, opening up the plasma magnetic field. At this point, you see blue. But, if you go with a black, and you added the plasma to it, the fold is this, is less, so you see green. And this is what we see changes. What we see, in what we have. And that's where the change comes, and that's where the new technology, understanding of the plasma is. It's gravitational magnetic field, because you reach the same point, with a higher or lower strength gravitational magnetic field. If you're higher, you create a different color. If you're lower, you different, different color, you create a different color. It's very much, as I explained before, is how hard you rub your hand. If you rub your hand slow, you have less heat. If you are very cold, you rub your hand faster and get more heat. It's the same hand, it's just the motion. But in plasma, it's the magnetic gravitational field strength. So, 
this brings back into, if you understand this point, how matters change in the body of the man when you breathe it. So, it changes the whole fundamental of the physics. It changes the whole fundamental of understanding of the creation in biology and chemistry. And then, what we say, it looks strange and it's changed, it's different. In a way, we speak from the plasmatic magnetic field, you speak from the physical point of view, as a matter state. So, how we absorb, how we uh, uh, attract, how we see things, is different. Uh, for example, we even see in, a, uh, in the guns of the copper oxide, we see in, a, in the lab, how fast, due to its gravitational magnetic field mass, it sinks to the bottom of the container, compared to the CO2, which is lighter. It's very simple. When you have higher strength gravitational magnetic field, which is a matter in the, in the, under condition of the Earth, you have a stronger gravitation field than the magnetic field. This is opposite to what you understand, what you see the effect, exactly as you see in the matter life, that the heavy elements sink faster. But in fact, the, color, the combination is by the ratio of the mass of the center plasma. Because its inertia gravitational magnetic field interacts with the Earth, so it, it looks as to be the same behavior as matter. So, in, in so many ways, the confusion comes in observation, which is not reality in, in the process of the whole thing. Because, the size of the copper oxide, more or less, is the same size as CO2. It's just where the gravitational magnetic field, the strength, in respect to the environment, changes. If you take the copper oxide, in the gravitational magnetic field beyond the um, solar system, you will observe different colors in different positions. Because the field allows the expansion where to be. If you keep it on the same point, you will see different colors, because in reality, in the, in the new environment which you have a different field, you see the interaction in different diameters, in different radiuses. So,